he's subtracting mixed numbers. Evan is walking two and eight miles to his aunt's house. He has already walked three fourths miles. How much farther does he have to walk? So, this is two and one eighth minus three fourths. So the steps are pretty much the same as addition, but this time we're subtracting because it said how much farther. And when you say how much farther or how much more, you're talking about subtraction. So first, we must find the common denominator of 8 and 4. We always ask ourselves, does 4 go into 8? And the answer is yes, so 8 is our common denominator. So just like last time, the 1 8 doesn't change, and you get minus something over 8. Now we say, how many times does 4 go into 8? goes in two times, so we must take the three times two, get six. This is where it can become a little tricky. If you recall, when we added problems and we said, you can't have uh, an improper fraction in the end, you, you, you absolutely cannot, but sometimes you have to create them because just like when you're subtracting um, and you get three minus nine, you have to borrow from the next column to make that three a 13, you have to do the same thing here, but it's a little bit different. So when you do this, we're going to borrow from the whole. We're going to make the 2 a 1. But now, since we borrowed 1 from the whole, we're technically borrowing 8 eighths. So my trick here is when you borrow, you make this one less, and then add the denominator to the numerator. So this 1 becomes a 9. OK, let me explain that one more time. We're borrowing, since we can't take 1 minus 6 because we'll get a negative, we're borrowing from the whole number, so the whole number changes from a 2 to a 1. Now, we're adding one whole, not just one, so this doesn't automatically become a 2. We're adding a whole, and a whole out of 8 is 8 eighths. So we're adding 8 eighths. So that's why you get 1 plus 8 equals 9. Okay? Now we're ready to subtract. Now 1 minus nothing is 1, and 9 minus 6 is 3. We keep the 8's the same, and we get 1 and 3 eighths. Alright, let's look at this problem. 6 and a third minus 5 and 6 ninths. Again, we want to find a common denominator. So to do that, we say, first ask ourselves, does 3 go into 9? The answer is yes, so that's a, a, the bigger number, 9, is our common denominator. So we're going to have 6 over 9, or 6 and something over 9, and 5 minus 5 and 6 over 9. All right, now we want to find the relationship. How many times does 3 go into 9? 3 times blank equals 9. The answer is 3, so we have, must do that to the top. 1 times 3 is 3. Okay, we run into that issue again. You can't take three minus six, so we need to borrow. So we borrow from the six and make the six a five. We add the new, because we're borrowing one, we're adding nine ninths. So we're adding nine to there, and that becomes a 12. So now five minus five cancels out and gives us nothing, okay? And 12 minus six is six. Keep the denominator the same. Now. This is not our final answer because we must simplify. And when we simplify 6 and 9, we know that they can both be divided by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. So our final answer to this problem is actually 2 thirds, not 6 ninths. Always make sure to simplify your fractions.